Okay, so I teach a course called uh, Reproductive Physiology. It has, has around 70 students in the fall semester. They're juniors and seniors. It's a required course in animal science and dairy science. Um, and you'll see my distribution of survey, students I have in the survey. Um, but my question in teaching any course is I need to know some information about the students. And so we all do surveys at the beginning. Well, what do you do with those? I do all of mine online. I have done it for a very long time in D2L. And then in, uh, what was the one before that? WebCT? WebCT. So I've had versions of that. I found nothing transports from uh, D2L to Canvas. So you have to rewrite everything. Okay. So, and I couldn't get any help with that from Canvas people that uh, their help center. So they said nothing was coming across, so you just have to rewrite it. So I had to rewrite my survey. How does survey become a quiz? They're exactly the same technology. It just depends on a couple little different clicks I'll show you through here as to what happens. But it's exactly the same thing. Um, so this is the front page of my course. I started out with some links down in the middle here. I probably will take those away because I didn't really understand how the links on the left-hand side worked when I did this last uh, fall. But what I want to show you is we'll go to my surveys here. And the one I have that I use is this getting to know you survey. And this is what comes up when you click on that. We're just going to um, preview that survey right now so I can show you what it looks like. So there's a um, thing asking you which section you're in. This is actually a multiple choice question. Okay. If you go to the next one, um, it asks you which major you are. But again, this is multiple choice. You can only select one of these. You can't select the two. I did that purposely because I have problems with people identifying double majors. And I can't deal with a double major. I need to know a single most important major. And I'm going to point out why that was important for me later here. Let me go down here. I have an essay question, so if you answered some other major, you could fill in what you want, and that puts it up there. And then I have um, how many years have you attended UW? You could pick one of those. It's a fairly short one. Um, why did you take this course? 90% of them because it's required. I expect that, but I list a bunch of different options. Um, this is an important one for me, where did you grow up? Okay, so I wanted to know whether they were from Wisconsin or they were from somewhere else. Um, again, this is an essay type one where they just type in something there. And, oh, and one more here. Uh, this asked about their background. Actually, what you would be surprised is most of our students come from a rural background. They don't come, I meant not rural, urban background. They don't come from a rural background. And then uh, species they had experience with, animals they might have. I don't quite know how to get to, to that correctly because they tell me if they've worked with a cow once, that's working with a cow, and that's not really working with a cow. Okay, so I find that out because we do a lot of animal work in the semester. So, and then uh, expected grade. Um, I'm actually surprised some people list a B. So, grades range from A to C. I rarely have anything below a C. So, um, and then at the end you would submit the quiz, okay, and you, you can see what your answers were, you can pull them back up afterwards. But the most important part of this for me is to go actually, if we go back to this um, quizzes here. Let me go back here. 
we can look over here on the right hand side you see this survey certificate uh, I should probably show you surveys stats there what you can do is you can click on that and that tells us after this populates this is the information from last semester Okay, so these are my different sections of the course. I can see they had the right number of students in it. The reason I picked it a graded survey is that I had to give some grades for them to complete it, otherwise they wouldn't complete the survey. So when they complete this survey, I assign them they were gonna get five points. And so this automatically populates into an area of the grade book with the number of points and a few. If they don't complete it, they get zero points. And they see right away that they don't have the grade in there. And so then that, encourages them to complete that survey. Um, I'll mention some other kinds that you can use in just a minute. Um, let's see, here was the one, 49% uh, of the classes, sorry. I'm not very good with my fingers. 49% uh, of the classes are uh, animal science majors. Um, we have 27% dairy science, and we have Two kinds of biologies, cows and LNS, they're really not much different, they're just where they're based out. But and then I have a few other things that straggle in from had an English major, I've had business majors, I've had other things that come in, but not very many of them. Now um, so here's the one that I asked if you answered other, what was um, what was your response? So one of the things you have to see is you have to see um, who responded to this. So here was the total number of students in the class, and I think I need to do this one. This thing changed on me a little bit. So if you look up here, we can see we have two respondents. I have to pick up one of their names, okay? And it doesn't matter if you see their name. This is not a big deal. Thing. So we'll look at Courtney. Voice. And so down here we have to go to speed grader. And then we're going to look up a uh, specific answer for that student. So grab here. genetics with possible double major in dairy science. Okay. So you have to go, you can go in and see individual answers for students. That was also important because I was going to go back and check relative to what grade they got in the class, what their background was, and what department they were in was particularly important to me. Okay, so let's go back to this one. And so, um, how many years were you in the university? Most of them are juniors and seniors, sophomores and uh, juniors. Um, let's that one. Here's the one with uh, background in agriculture. We had, and then what species they had. Now the species ones is interesting because you can click on multiple ones. You don't have to click on just one. Okay, so you can answer multiple questions on that. Okay, great. In the class, I actually have one student who said they were only expecting a BC. I think they probably got a BC. So, um, you know, that just, everybody has different expectations. I just want to see a range of what they're doing. Um, and people are becoming more realistic over time in what they think they can get. In a class, but we all know that people spend different amounts of time. Okay, so the reason for doing this was I wanted to gather this information. Okay, and I actually used this in a national publication on here. I didn't have a picture of this, <laughs> I'm just showing you in this journal. This was on uh, how to communicate with undergraduates uh, that lack an animal science or agricultural background. So you can see how I use this survey to find those. 
But I also communicated with five other land grant universities, so there was a total of six looking at this national wide. And it turns out we're all the same. But you know, we had data then to back up for a number of years coming off of these surveys. So the survey worked for me. Okay, it's not too hard to make, and I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second here. Um, but that was the basics of the survey. Okay, it's pretty easy. This was a graded survey as opposed to an ungraded one. So an ungraded one could be anonymous. You don't have any records of who completed it. But again, I wanted to make sure that everybody completed this. And there was, I always have people sign releases for their information that I can't, that I say that I use this in publications and things. Everything is, doesn't have a name on it or anything associated with that, but. Okay, so any questions on that part? Okay, so let me talk about how to build a survey or a quiz. So if you go to the second page here, the biggest thing that I can show you is that I use the Canvas material extensively. So if you click on Help on the bottom uh, over here, on this Help, um, and you uh, search the Canvas guide, Okay, you end up with this nice little screen here, and this is what I show you here. And I use this one right here in the center left called Instructor Guide. I use that extensively. So I've looked at some of the videos, and he has copies of videos on the handout there um, that you can link to. But this is the Instructor Guide, and you can see it on the second page there. I have a list of it. So, um, but they have just about every area that you might want to use here at the top, and then it links down to the bottom part. Um, what's important for us here today is quizzes, and they have just about every question that you can ask, how to, how to put in different kinds of questions, how to build a quiz, how to build a survey. So they have all of those questions there, and I use those extensively when doing that. So let's go to building a quiz. Back to my course here. So I don't know if any of you have noticed this, but you know, to navigate around, sometimes it's a little difficult. But up here on the top it says Animal Science 434 quizzes getting to know you. You can jump back to any of those places you want. So we're going to jump back to quizzes. So that was the quiz page that had the list of them. The green one are ones that are published. The black ones here are ones that are not published yet. They're just for you to see. I created them with examples in here. Okay, so here's the survey example. We're going to click on that. So when you start a new survey, you add a survey or you add a quiz. Okay. And then we're going to look down here and um, we're going to edit it. Okay, so here's what comes up first. So you can see, um, uh, let's see, where did, we need to set down here what we want. We can name the thing. So I named it survey example. Um, you could give some instructions in there. I generally, most of the things are self-evident. Um, notice down here I have graded survey. There are five options in there, and I have this on the sheet, in the next page sheet. It's a graded quiz a practice quiz, a graded survey, or an ungraded survey. So the graded survey, you set a score, and when they complete the survey, they'll get that score. There's no grade for any individual question on there. It's, you either complete it or you don't complete it. An ungraded one could be anonymous. It might not go anywhere. Um, it might be something that you could look at um, as an anonymous survey, typical sort of thing. Uh, graded quiz, I'll show you one of those. That's a typical quiz that you might give that you're going to give a grade on and it populates actually the grade uh, book with an automatic grade there. And then a practice quiz doesn't go anywhere. It's practice for the student to do that and it's not recorded anywhere. Okay, so you have different ones there and you're just doing this in this spot where it says graded survey down here. You're just selecting the different ones that you want. So that's pretty easy. Um, assignment group, these are the different groups that you might have in this, 
in your assignments. So because I have so many assignments, I've broken this up into different ones. I just picked this is the survey group that I have this in here. Um, one of the things I found is you better make, when you first create these things, you better assign the scores correctly. So the number of points that you're going to get, if you change these afterwards, they will not take effect. So you have to do it in the order that it's down there, and it will not let you change the numbers later on. You can change them, but they never take effect. They revert back to the first one that you did. Um, so we have some things, shuffle answers, time limit, keep submission anonymous, as none of those are selected in this case. Um, allow multiple attempts. I always allow them to do multiple things on the survey, just in case they haven't got done with it that time. But you know, the quiz may or may not have that. You have a choice to keep um, keep the score on a quiz, so you can keep the latest or the highest. Or, um, there's several different choices there. Um, John? Yeah. So <clears throat> if I check that keep submission anonymous, submissions anonymous. That means that you can't see what they are, you just see that they did it. Yeah. Right? So that'd be a great way to get formative feedback where you give them credit for take for for giving you feedback while assuring them that whatever they want to say will be Yeah, no, you will can do that. affect your grade. Yeah, so you can certainly do that. I did not know that. That's kinda of cool. Um so um you can show one question at a time, or you can have a whole long sheet. I usually do one question at a time, so it just looks through the thing like I showed you. Um, uh, oh, there's some interesting things here for quiz restriction. So the first one that they have here is required an access code. That's basically a password. So you can write a password in there, and then you can email it out to everybody. Somehow give them a password to log in to complete it. So you can understand how that might even be important for a quiz. You're only going to give them the password at a specific time so that people can't get in or afterwards. And then you can disable it after that. Can you click that box real quick? Let's see what options appear. Yep. That asks you to put your password. Whatever the password is, sorry. OK. Now you can also put a list of IP addresses in. So if you can do it that way, too. I've never used either one of those. In fact, I just discovered those because I didn't. I don't know whether they're new or not, but I didn't remember seeing them. My assignments, you can assign to specific people to do this, specific groups. I have assigned to um, everyone. And then I, um, you can put in when it's due. So when I wrote this one the other day, I just made it due today at uh, 5 p.m. And um, you could access it at 80. 8 a.m. today at 5 p.m. It's not active though because it's not a published quiz. It's only a uh, non published one yet. Okay, so let's go up and we're going to go up to the next part. So we're going to go up across up here at the top. You can see we, we were on details. We can go to questions. Okay, so I have these collapsed down. Okay, so let's just take a look at the first, first one here. So we're going to edit it what day it, it is. So I put in, um, this was a multiple choice question. So you can see at the top I just called it something so I can find it easy. Um, multiple choice, okay, so you have a lot of choices. Okay, they have just about every type of question you could possibly think about putting in there. Um, typed in what the question was, and then here are the potential answers. Um, let's say Thursday, Friday. You need to assign which one is the correct answer. And mine shows mine shows some little green things here. So you can assign which one is the correct one. This one is not showing that. OK, so there's little green arrows on here. And so you can change which one is the correct answer. But it's not showing it on this computer, so I don't know. That's true for surveys and quizzes. Surveys have correct answers too. Yes. Oh, sometimes. Oh, maybe that's why it isn't. So it's probably on that. It's probably on the quiz. Okay. So that's probably why it's not. You're right. I made the same question. 
in my quiz, so you're right about that. Okay, so there's the first one. You can give feedback though on that little thing right over the camera. Oh yeah, yeah, you can put feedback in there for whatever you want in those things. Um, and sometimes on, quiz, on quizzes I would do something like that, but not on this one. So let's look at uh, question two, are you male? This is an example of a true-false one. <coughs> So I just write, the only difference in here is you put true false up at the top. These say one point on here, but again, this is a survey, so it doesn't really matter what points you put in there. Because at the end, it's gonna be overrided by how many points are in the, the hand in because it's a graded survey. Okay, again though, when you get to the quiz, it's critical when you build the question to put the correct number of points in because it cannot be changed later on, which annoys me, but that's, that's what it is, okay? So that's pretty easy, you just type it in there and then you have true or false. And let's see, um, where were you born? This is an example of the essay question up here at the top. So again, you just type it in here and they're gonna see a little box pop up to put that in. Next one down is degree. Um, so this is an example of a multiple answer type one. So you know you could be have a bachelor you could have bachelor's BA master's MA PhD um, and if we have this extra thing down here we could actually delete this other one so we could easily just go down here and delete it now we just have those three answer possibilities um, and last one oh this was an interesting one what is your favorite color? And so this is what's called a multiple drop-down. So this will have a drop-down menu, menu to choose, and I'll show you what these look like. Um, uh, you have, it took me a while to figure out how to do this one. So here's the question, but you have to put in this thing here, and then down here, you're showing the answer. This means this is a potential answer here. And so you'll see this drop-down menu here for that, and then you put in the potential answers, okay? so. Let's take a look at what this thing looks like. So you can always preview it as an instructor. The students can't see anything until you publish the thing. Okay, so here was the first one. What day is it? Today's Friday. <laughs> so, um, are you male? For me, that's true. Um, so you can see it's pretty, it's pretty quick for them to answer this thing. So where were you born? In this case, for me, it's California. I do, when you do an essay thing, or any of these fill-in sort of things, you have to be very specific about what you want because you're gonna get, you know, typically on things like that, oh, I was born in Florida, I moved to California, I moved to Wisconsin, and, and we're kinda, you know, if you're interested, I was interested in really where were they at during high school age, because that's the most informative information for me about things I was looking for. Um, and then, let's see, let's go, what's the next one here? So here are those different degree things that we had on there, so you, you can see here that now you can click multiple ones. On the other time, on the regular multiple choice, you can only click one answer on the thing. And then here's the color one. So what is your favorite color? You pick red, green, blue, but you can think of how you might use that in different ways, okay? You pick yellow. Submit the quiz. Okay, now, what you see when you submit it as you see actually your answers here. Um, so, so you can see, you can always go back and see what your answers were, and the student can back and see what their answers are. If you allow them to do it multiple times, they can always resubmit the thing, and they can change an answer depending if they, a lot of times I get them, they forget to do one. You know, and it warns you, but they forget about that. And so then they have to go back and complete it later on. Because they don't get the grade until they complete all the answers. Okay. Okay, so that is the
quiz. Now, how do you take this to, I mean, the survey, how do you take it to a quiz? So, let's edit this quiz. And here I did this as a graded <coughs> quiz, which is probably what you're going to do, but you could do ungraded, okay? And survey could be feedback, it could be on an ungraded quiz, um, or a practice quiz, too. Um, all, the, all the rest of this is all the same as what we saw before down here. This doesn't change. You just have all the same options on this. I like that option that you can show the correct answers at a certain time. So yep. you can automatically have the answers appear on Friday after 5 yep. p.m. Yep. So um, let's go to the questions. So now, so you notice that, see, each one of these have points in them. There are five points. Originally, I created one of these accidentally with one, and I couldn't make it be five, so I had to delete it and report back in. So that's where I found out that information. But let's look at the day of the week. This thing is moving. I didn't realize you could move them around, but you must be able to move them around too. Okay, so what is today? Possible answers, and this one takes a little bit getting used to. So. This was a multiple choice one. So this is what day of the week it is. And so right now I have selected with the green one that Friday is the correct answer. So to do this, all you have to do is you just have to hover over this thing right here. And now the correct answer would be Thursday. It's not obvious how you do that. It took me a long time to figure that part out. But you can change the correct answer on the thing. Um, um, then you can put little comments down here. You can put general comments as well as comments for each answer by picking up one of these boxes. And so here you can say, <coughs> oh, yes, you are correct. So the green is the right answer. The red is the wrong the answer. answer. The and blue. blue, general comments. General comments. So, um, Comments for a wrong answer, comments for a correct answer um, on those. And these little boxes say yes or correct, incorrect. Okay? So we can update that question. Um, here's an interesting one. This one is actually a matching one. So this actually cracks, uh, creates a really good matching type question. So I just picked out different types of questions for you to see. So here's um, uh, match the hormone with the site of production. And again, I had matching up at the top. Let me show you. So I selected matching up in here. It's one of those particular types of questions. You, write the, you always write the question in. And then you write the answer and then the correct matching response to that. So GnRH is a hormone that's made in the hypothalamus. LH is a hormone that's made in the anterior pituitary, testosterone is a hormone that's made in the testes. And then, this is nice, it has distracting match possibilities distractors. And so you just enter these in a list. Okay? And then it randomizes these things in the list where it is. So, let's go down to the last question. This was just the true-false question that I had, so you just put it under true-false. But again, in each one, as you begin doing this, put the number of points that you want for it at the very beginning. Okay, so let's go back up. We should save that thing. So saving is not publishing. It's just saving what you've worked on at that point. Okay, so let's preview it. First question. Let's say, we're going to say Saturday, so let's see what happens. And it's not going to do it now, we'll do it at the end. Here's our different hormones. This one's hypothalamus, this one is pituitary. We're going to do this one purposely wrong. We're going to say the ovary, okay? But see what I mean? It, it doesn't put them in the order that you listed them. It randomizes the order. It stays the same throughout all the questions on that pull-down menu. I don't know whether it's randomized the next time somebody looks at it, or it's just randomized for you. It's not clear to me 
what it's doing. Um, and then uh, here's the two false. Are you male? We'll say false. Okay. Then we're going to submit the quiz. Okay, so they might see this now or not, depending on what you want. But here's the points I got. Um, it says. I got 6.67 out of 15 possible points for this quiz. Okay, I was wrong on what the day was. I answered Saturday, and then it actually tells, it should say, oh, I forgot to leave the correct, I don't know why I didn't do it, but notice this one down here. This one it says the correct answer when I did a wrong one. This one was wrong. Um, Correct answer was anterior pituitary. I answered the green gland. Okay. This one was testosterone. I said ovary. It should have been testes. Okay. And then down here, your sex is male. You answered, or your sex is male. And I said false. And it said correct. That was the answer I put in as the correct answer. So again, all those correct answers have those little green arrows on them. And you can move it around to whatever you think is correct. Okay, so that's pretty, now, this graded quiz, it creates, a, it creates a column in the grade book, and it puts the score in, and you can see zero, or you can see the grade. So you can go down and you can quickly find out who hasn't done the quiz or the activity that you have. Now, these all show up in, we go back to the top here, go back here. So I had things that I was working on in quizzes, but they also show up in the assignments. So remember it was asking me for an assignment group that it was in? So here's one I have that's called um, Lab Write-Ups, that's a lot of them. But you notice I have a group called Surveys. So here's the actively published one, here's the one I was showing you there. Um, lab Extras, I stuck this other one down here under Exams. So it should be down a little bit farther. Example quiz, okay. So, and that's where, those were the groups that it was asking me to put it in. So it depends on how you organize your course. In there. So, you know, I might have a survey slash quiz, or it could be however you want to organize when that thing should be. Okay, so that's what I have. So in general, the survey part of it is what I've used extensively. I haven't done the quiz thing. I think I'm going to do a lot more quizzes. It came to me that, you know, I could do this during lecture and avoid the eye clicker sort of things and stuff. I could do it on this. All my students either have a laptop or they have a uh, smartphone. They have one of the two. You can get access to both of those. You could get access to these questions so they could do this in lecture, these things. It wouldn't necessarily need to be graded, but I could get immediate responses back. So using this, I could do the same thing that we were doing on the other ones. Um, but I haven't tried that. It's just that I think that that would work to do exactly what they're talking about.